Good morning. Welcome to First Unitarian Church of Oklahoma City, where our mission is to explore the eternal, nurture community, and pursue the common good. I'm Reverend Diana Davies, and my pronouns are she, her, hers. And I'm so happy and honored to be joining you in your homes today as we share our message of wonder, love, and justice. Whether you come to this service as peaceful as a river, as joyful as a fountain, brimming with tears like raindrops, or seeking a love that is as deep and as wide as the ocean, you are welcome here today. We welcome you in all your brokenness and in your wholeness. No matter who you have been, who you are, or who you are becoming, we greet you today in love. To start our service this morning, here is a video meditation that was created by my colleague, Reverend Molly Hausch Gordon. The water takes on many forms, just as each of us has a unique and necessary strength that we bring to our community and the work of love. Take a moment now to drop down into the deep wellspring of your own spirit and bathe yourself in the strength that is the groundwater of your person. Are you a roaring fall wearing rock away with sheer force of will? Are you a small sliver of water in a crevice? Breaking it open slowly and steadily. Are you buoyant like a great salt lake, practiced at holding yourself or others aloft? Are you tenacious like the mountain stream? finding your way down and around and through every obstacle you face. Are you still and calm like the pond at daybreak, radiant peace found by your shores? deep within. Do you soothe like the steam rising from a cup of tea? Do you dissolve away stubborn muck like dishwater? soften and smooth the edges like a creeping fog. Do you clear away distraction like a cleansing rain? upon the strength, the power that is yours. Draw that strength into your heart, draw it up into your soul, and there find peace. 
as we endure difficult times together, we need each of our power, each of our resilience, each of our love to make us whole. family to please light our chalice. The burning chalice re represents the light of reason and science, the warmth of loving community, the cleansing heat of justice, and the flame of hope. Thank you, Rosalina and Hutton. The tradition of the in-gathering service is based on the idea that some people may take a little break from church over the summer as students go on vacation and families may take that time to go on a trip out of town, away from the settings of ordinary daily life. But this is a year unlike any other. And few of us are traveling. Most of us are staying at home. And for those of us who haven't been able to join services over the summer because of technical issues, that problem doesn't go away with the fall. For others, there was no break from church because there's been no break, period. And so this year, both being apart and coming back together have very different meanings. And maybe that's okay. Because one thing that the strangeness of the last six months has taught us is that physical distancing doesn't necessarily have to mean social distancing. And in a church context, a beloved community is never truly apart. In many UU congregations, in gathering is celebrated with what is called either a water communion or water ceremony. We had our first in-gathering water ceremony just two years ago, but it's already become a tradition. The symbolism of the water ceremony is pretty simple. Members of a church community bring their own water that is poured together with all the other water, representing both the way that our faith has many sources and is still one faith, and the way that our individual streams of our lives flow together into one community, reminding us all that we are all connected to one another, to the planet, to all of nature. We pour our water together and we remember that all of us are made mostly of water, that we all need water to live, that all of us came into being in our mother's amniotic waters. We remember that together, we aren't just a bunch of little drops. We form a mighty river flowing into an infinite sea. Our opening hymn is I've Got Peace Like a River. It's number 100 in our gray hymnal, and it's performed here by Lana Henson.
the chair of the DLRE Search Committee, I am very pleased to introduce our new Director of Lifespan Religious Exploration, Tim Atkins. He is a credentialed religious educator and his most recent position was as Director of Lifespan Religious Education at Cedar Lane Unitarian Universalist Church in Bethesda, Maryland. He served on the UUA Board of Trustees, and he's a leader in Lareda, the Liberal Religious Educators Association. Tim was looking for a church in which he could get to know all of the adult members, youth, and children by name. He was searching for a church like ours, one that is ready to grow its religious exploration program one where he can commit to helping it develop over time. I am so thankful for the excellent work of the search committee, which included Courtney Custer, Michael Kay, Alyssa Lee, Zane Scott, and Charlie Singleshin. Could you all wave so everyone can see you and thank you? The right to select our religious educator is a precious part of our living heritage as Unitarian Universalists. This morning, we establish a covenant between ourselves and our Director of Lifespan Religious Exploration, Tim Atkins. It is a covenant, not a law, but of spirit. It symbolizes a mutual commitment and affirmation of shared trust and responsibility. If you, the people of First Unitarian Church of Oklahoma City, are prepared to exercise your collective power to install Tim Atkins as our Director of Lifespan Religious Exploration, and if you understand the obligation of loyalty, truth, and love, which this act embodies, Please join in the words of affirmation that you'll see on your screen. Uh, we recognize this responsibility. We are ready to take upon ourselves these obligations, and we promise to fulfill them to the best of our ability. Tim, are you prepared to formally accept the special ministry you offer to our children and youth, our families? and our spiritual community. Yes, I am. <laughs> now, I have a question for children and youth. Do you, the young people of our church, promise to bring to me your questions and doubts, your ideas and joys, your laughter and tears, and work with me with all your heart as we explore together what it means to be Unitarian Universalists? Do you promise to respect your teachers and each other and to learn new things with an open heart and to work hard at growing into the best people we can be? If so, please say we do and give your camera a big wave. Say we do. We do. <laughs> Religious and moral growth and learning are some of the most precious gifts that we can offer parents and children. To those of you who have children or youth in the RE program, I ask, will you promise to be an active part of your children's religious exploration? Will you bring them faithfully to church? Will you talk with them about what they learn in their classes? And will you try to build on those lessons at home? If so, I invite your heartfelt response in saying, we will. And to those of us who don't have children or youth in our religious education program, I ask you, do you promise to support our director of religious exploration, to treat him gently, to nurture him, to trust him, to challenge him, to help him, 
to guide him as he works with us and the children, youth, and families of our congregation? Do you promise to be open to your own religious exploration and stay engaged with the responsible search for truth and meaning? If you do, please offer your enthusiastic response by saying, we do. We do. <laughs> and now let us say together a covenant of love and affirmation, as now I believe will be shown on the screen as Jim shares his screen. Ah, except for that he has, his computer just died. So let's go ahead and <laughs> read the words together. With the expectation that you will always strive to be of service to all, with the promise that you will work for spiritual growth within yourself, as well as fostering spiritual growth of our children and youth, our families, and our spiritual community. And with the hope that you will always reach for truth and insight, we, the members and friends of the First Unitarian Church of Oklahoma City, do hereby install you, Tim Atkins, as our Director of Lifespan Religious Exploration. We pledge to move with you in a partnership that works to strengthen the life of our church and our liberal religious movement mindful of its privileges and its responsibilities. I accept a ministry among our children and youth, our families, and our spiritual community. I know that I have the support of your hearts and hands as together we build here what no one of us could achieve alone. I pledge to move with you in a spirit of openness, in the paths of truth as we discern them, and in the bonds of caring and understanding. Thank you all for such a warm welcome. I feel blessed to be part of this church. Here is to an amazing new chapter together. And now let us hear an anthem, Let the River Run. This slideshow includes uh, photos that many of you sent by water that is sacred to you or meaningful to you. And we've supplemented that with some pictures of water um, in our congregation. <laughs> Um, so here it is. Before I do that, though, can we just do a big old happy thing? We're so happy to, <laughs> we're so happy to have you here, Tim. <laughs> yay. Just yay. <laughs> what a happy day.
Every Sunday we take an offering. All the cash and designated checks from the offering go directly to external nonprofit organizations doing good work in our community. Our Change for Change partners. This month, our Change for Change partner is the Lottie House Drop-In Center. Lottie House is a safe and welcoming place for adults impacted by mental health illness, homelessness, substance use, and co-occurring conditions. Their goal is to pri provide an environment of social support and education and to be a bridge to other community resources. While we listen to the offertory, you may wish to make a donation to our Change for Change partner using a credit card through our website, or this could be a good time to find your checkbook, write out a check, and put it aside to mail to First Unitarian tomorrow morning. <sighs> Let today's offering reflect our highest aspirations for the work of this church in the world. Friday afternoon, Friday evening, um, many of us got emails, notifications from friends via Facebook or phone calls um, telling us the sad news that Ruth Bader Ginsburg had passed away. And for many of us, it was a moment of shock, if not surprise. And it's been difficult thinking of words that can accurately reflect the anger, the fear, the sadness that so many of us are feeling. So I'd like to just take a minute and just drop into the body, just settle in for a minute Find a comfortable seat. Maybe let your eyes close. And just notice the breath. And 
Noticing how the body breathes itself with no effort on our part. A gift to all of us from life itself. And as we sink into the calm spot within our being, like the deep part of an ocean or a lake that is still, that is quiet, even when a hurricane rages on top of the water. Finding that place. And then noticing the emotions that also come to the surface once we dive deep down. And sometimes it can be so helpful to share our emotions in the loving embrace of community. So I ask you now to go ahead and share in the chat what is coming up for you. What are the emotions that you find in yourself today? We recognize fear and sadness, helplessness, anxiety and grief, the sense of being just worn out and afraid, fear that rights will be taken away. Also determination and a recommitment to change celebration of the work of Ruth Bader Ginsburg, even as we are sad that we have lost her. Gratitude to this congregation that encourages us to face change. For all of these things, we are grateful, even the hard emotions, because they remind us that we are human which is also a gift. Let's take one more deep breath together. May we find strength when we need it. May we find the courage to mourn. And may we find the resilience to keep moving on, knowing that we are held in love. Blessed be. Amen. Tim has a story for us today. I don't know if I want to follow that, but all right, <laughs> Diana, sure. Um, today, our story is called A Drop's Journey, and it's one that I've written. And you have some very important parts during this time for all ages the sound effects. So every so often in my story, you're going to see something like that pop up right below me, all right? When you see those, just follow the directions or say the word out loud when it pops up. Now, no need to unmute yourself for this. We want everyone to create their own sound effects, okay? So here begins our story. My earliest memory is drifting up through the sky, heading further and further up. 
I couldn't see anyone else that looked like me, but I could somehow feel that the sky was full of things just like me. As I kept rising, I started to gain a form I could see. I was a single drop, but I was a part of something greater. Together with some other drops, we formed a family, a big and puffy family. We floated around the sky for what seemed like an eternity. But eventually, we started to fall back down to Earth. Although the trip back down was pretty fun, I was surrounded by my friends and family, I still felt pretty lonely. I missed that feeling of being part of something greater than myself. And it was pretty fun floating around in the sky. I felt like I was losing a part of myself as I fell toward the ground. Whoosh. And before I knew it, splat, I hit the ground hard. There was green stuff all around me and I slowly started to sink down into the ground. It was cold and dark and I was really scared. Some of my friends that fell into the darkness with me disappeared into different roots and I felt alone. I kept falling and falling through the ground. It was so dark, I couldn't see where I was going. And I thought I'd be stuck alone in the darkness forever. I slammed up against something pretty hard. And I was stuck against a rock in a hard place for quite a long time. It took time, oh so much time, but I made it past the rock. And then I met other drops like me who made it past the rock in the hard place. And we started to come together. This was a very exciting time for me. There were entirely different drops than I had met before. And they had some really interesting stories to tell. One remember being part of a plant that got eaten by a deer. And one remember being part of a great storm. It was blown all the way through a tree. It was nice having so many different drops from different backgrounds come together. Eventually our stream, that's what we like to call ourselves, made it out of the darkness and into the light. We saw all sorts of fun sights and soon our stream joined with other streams. We weren't worried about losing each other because we found even more friends along the way. We became more than just individual streams. We became a river. And our river merged with more and more and soon we joined in a big body of water, one of the elder drops called the ocean. Let's get some waves going. I had never felt more at home. There is a big community of all us individual drops of water. Some came from rivers, some came from the sky. Drops would continually join us and we would celebrate their arrival. Drops would also leave us, disappearing back up to the sky. And although we mourned their loss, we knew they were continuing on their journey and wished them well. I had made it through the dark times and arrived at my home. In our story, the drops of water come from different streams to find a community together when they merged into a river and later the sea. When two sources of water merge, it's impossible to tell which water came from which source. A true community is formed. We all come from different places and different experiences, but when we unite as a community, we are inseparable. Our drops of water may have come from different streams, but united, we are a river. Thank you. Diana? So last week, many of you received an envelope in the mail, including a letter from our DLRE, Tim Atkins and me, containing some stickers and a small vial of water. That water came from what was gathered during our water ceremony last year, <laughs> representing our shared faith and our beloved community. 
And if you didn't receive yours, no worries. We aren't a faith that believes in holy water, except that all water is holy. All water is sacred. And all waters are interconnected. So some tap water is a perfectly fine thing to serve as a replacement. We also asked you to gather and bring to this service some water that is sacred for you personally, that represents some meaningful experience or a sacred place for you. So if you haven't done so already, please go ahead and take a moment and go get your sacred waters. Once you have them, you can pop off the lid of your little vial. And then as a symbol of our faith and our community, let's pour our waters together. We'll use some of this combined water today in a blessing. And then whatever is left, I ask you to keep in a closed container, maybe put it in the refrigerator so it doesn't all evaporate. Um, and when we get together again in person, we will pour all of our waters together. Finally. At our in-gathering last year, we acknowledge the indigenous peoples on whose land we live today. And our water ceremony was based on the tradition of the four directions. In many earth-based spiritual traditions, the four directions represent different seasons of the year and different aspects of life. The East is spring, the dawning of new ideas, inspiration, air, change, life as it flows like a river. The South is summer, a time of fertility and fire, a time of transformation, joy like a fountain. The West is autumn, a time for reflecting on our emotions as light reflects off of water, a time for tears that fall like cleansing and healing raindrops. And the north is winter, a heavy time of waiting as the earth is heavy, a time for balance, a deep time as the ocean is deep. So at this time, we'll use the waters that we've just combined in a blessing that honors the four directions. And specifically, we'll be blessing the spaces in which we learn, but first, Tim, would you say a few words about what we mean by learning spaces? Of course. James Luther Adams was one of our most important Unitarian Universalist theologians ever. In the mid-1900s, he wrote about what he called the five smooth stones of liberal religion. To this day, it remains an important piece of our Unitarian Universalist theology. His first smooth stone was Revelation is continuous. Now a friend of mine, Reverend Naomi King, wrote a kid's version using slightly easier to understand language and her version of the first smooth stone is this. We're always learning. We are always learning. That is the first thing that our religion calls us to do. To commit to always being, being willing to learn being willing to change our mind, being willing to evolve. We want our knowledge to grow forever, like a mighty oak tree. But oak trees need stuff to grow, just like you need stuff in order to keep learning too. One thing oak trees need to grow is the right kind of soil, the right kind of home. And just like the oak tree, we too need special places to learn. It might be your desk. It could be your bedroom. It could be a space in your kitchen. There is some space in your home that you just seem to gravitate to when it's time to learn something. That is your learning space. And that is the learning space that we want to bless today. That is the space we want to make holy today. 
Helen. Thank you. So if it's available to you, we ask you now to move to the place in your home that you consider to be your primary learning space. And that may not be possible, uh, maybe because you are worshiping together today as a family and each of you have your own separate learning spaces, or maybe because you can't be in this service and in your learning space at the same time. Um, that's okay. We ask you to go ahead and to bless the space that you are in now, and you can always repeat this blessing in your learning space later on. So I'm going to ask you to rise in body or in spirit as we do this. Now, doing a blessing utilizing the four directions is tricky in a virtual environment because it's likely that we will all be turning around in different directions because we're all in different locations. And not only that, but we may not be entirely sure which way is north, south, east, and west. And that's okay, because we're not orthodox. If you think about where the sun usually comes up and you call that east, that will be good enough. So now taking your water, Let's all turn east, which happens to be this way for me. Go ahead and dip your fingers into the water and sprinkle the water out in front of you. And we say, blessings of the east. May the coming year be full of the dawning of new ideas and inspiration. May we be as responsive to change as a river that flows, navigating whatever barriers it encounters along the way, becoming a mighty roaring waterfall when encountering a sudden descent, becoming rambunctious rapids when encountering a barrier, becoming as light as a cloud when we come across dry spots, but always, always becoming. And now turning to the south, <laughs> Dip your finger into the water again and sprinkle the space in front of you as we say, blessings of the South. May this be a space and time of creativity and transformation. May we respond to intolerance and injustice, not with the cool of apathy, but with the fire of passion. And even in the most trying of times, may we find joy, like the discovery of a fountain in the desert, quenching our thirst and giving us the will to keep going on. And then turning to the west, <laughs> which I can't quite do, again, dip your fingers into the water and sprinkle the water in this direction. And we say blessings of the west. In this time of physical separation, may we find time to reflect. May we honor all of our emotions, both the happy and the sad. May we learn about ourselves as much as we learn about any subject of study. May we learn to honor the cleansing and healing power of our own tears. And finally, turning to the north, sprinkling water in that direction. Blessings of the North, in this time of separation and isolation, in this time of doubt, worry and loss, may we remember that spring will come, that we will be together again someday, like the animals that crawl from their dens after hibernation to rejoice in the sun. And may we remember that even as we are physically apart, we are still connected all of our lives flowing into one another as one great deep ocean. And turning back to where we started, facing your screen one more time, please take a moment to extend your hand in a blessing to every other person who is a part of this beloved community of lifespan learning and exploration. Blessings, everyone. Blessed be. That was beautiful. 
Dana, I hope that we post that blessing in the Facebook group later. Thank yeah. you. You know, in the mailing you received last this week, hopefully, uh, with in addition to the water, you may have gotten these stickers, and I see some people already holding them up, which makes me smile. We invite you to place these stickers in your learning place. Maybe they go on your laptop. Maybe they go on your desk. Maybe they go on your refrigerator. Let them be a reminder of this blessing and a reminder that in times of uncertainty, you got this. We got this. May it be so. Amen. Now, please join us in our closing song, There's a River Flowing in My Soul. Selena and Hutton, would you extinguish our chalice for us, please? We extinguish this flame, but not the light of love and community, which burns on in our hearts. Ruth Bader Ginsburg, in one of her last interviews, told the story of how, as a talented young lawyer, she was rejected from one firm after another so that she ended up going in another direction, which ultimately sent her to the Supreme Court. She said that because one route wasn't open to her, she had to find another way. And that other way took her someplace better than she could have even imagined. So many of us now have this feeling that life just keeps putting up one barrier after another. But may we remember Justice Ginsburg's lesson. Like flowing water that encounters boulders, cliffs, deserts, or any other kind of barrier, when you find that a route isn't open to you, may you find another way. And may that way be greater than you could have even imagined. Blessed be. Please join us after the service. Just give us a couple of minutes to get some coffee uh, and uh, then come back and join us for a virtual coffee hour. And uh, Nathan and Loriana will be over in a different Zoom room um, with their newcomers orientation. But before that, I have a little postlude for you. 
This postlude reminds us that although our in-gathering this year must be virtual, we will be together in person again one day. And until that time, know that you are held in love, that you are beautiful, that your life matters so much. This is On the Day We Are Together Again by Humberg. Blessings on everyone. Oh. We'll bend when we eat at the same table again. We will walk around the block hand in hand. We will walk around the block hand in hand. We will stop for a snack at the taco truck stand. We will walk around the block hand in hand. Someday we will go back to work. Someday we will go back to work. May we be among people who respect our worth. Someday we will go back to work I will help the strangers I meet I will help the strangers I meet it is possible to get back on our feet I will help the strangers I See you soon.